Hey guys, welcome back to the CNC Auto Channel. I'm your friendly neighborhood mechanic, and today we're back on Project Retro Joe. If you remember last time, we start, tried to start it with a little bit of starting fluid, spraying that into the carburetor, and it tried to kick over. So that was good news. That means this thing's going to be a runner. The next thing that we need to try is to clean up the fuel system. We're going to take this thing one system at a time. I'm going to show you how to go through all the systems of the vehicle that's been sitting like this one has for about 20 years. And so the first place that we're going to start today is with this carburetor. So let's dig in. So, in order to get a carburetor off of an engine, there's a lot of hoses connected to it, a lot of pipes. So just make sure that you take a lot of pictures of all the different angles of the carburetor and all of these different hoses and pipes that connect to it so that when you put it back together, you'll know where to connect them again. Usually, carburetors like this, four barrel here, are held on with four screws in the corners. I've already undone that. And so what we're gonna do is, Undo all the hoses, undo all the screws, undo all these connections for your throttle, and then you just lift it up and out of the way. I'm going to take it over to the workbench here. All right, so we've got a carburetor off of an engine. Look at this. We've got wide open spaces for nuts and bolts and critters to fall down inside. So anytime you open up an engine, it's a really good idea to get you some rags or something like that and, and plug them, plug all those holes up that go into the engine. That way nothing accidentally falls down inside of there while you've got it apart. Oh, that can cause all kinds of problems if it gets in there. You bend valves, you can mess up pistons, all kinds of trouble. Another good tip, use something bright colored. That way you remember, hey, I gotta pull that out of there before I put that part back on. All right, so we got the carburetor off the vehicle here. As you can see, I brought over here to the workbench. Ooh, look how nasty and dirty. Come check this out. Look at all this nastiness. I mean, that's just years of caked on varnish. And you can imagine what the inside of this thing's... This is not wet. That is baked on there. So you can imagine how dirty the inside of this thing is. And notice, no, no fuel is sloshing out of here when I turn it upside down. That's another sign this thing has been dry. But this is your typical Quadrajet carburetor. You can get a rebuild kit for this thing. You know, 20 bucks. I mean, not a big deal at all. Just take your time, take it apart really slowly, clean it up really good inside, put it back together with all the new gaskets and needles and everything that come with the kit, and you'll be amazed how well this thing will run when you're done. So you got the carburetor off the vehicle. Now what do you do? Well, you take it inside the house, and you put it on your wife's dining room table, right underneath the crystal chandelier and that's where you're going to rebuild it right <laughs> well that's what i do anyway don't follow my example all the time plus it gives you an opportunity to use you know some of those amazon boxes that you don't have any other use for but don't be intimidated as you start taking these things apart you're going to find all kinds of little bitty tubes and springs and screws and, and, and it can be a little bit overwhelming. Just take your time. There are plenty of tutorials out there on YouTube and otherwise that you can look at to know how to put it all back together. But just take it all apart and clean as much of it as you can. And here's a real good tip for you guys. You know, back in the day, we used to have to spray some solvent down in all the little passages and hope to clean them out. Well, now you can put this thing inside of a ultrasonic cleaning bath and it'll shake all of the the corrosion and varnish out of it with a good solvent so there's a tip for you guys so we got the lid off of this carburetor the top plate and look down inside of here man look at all of the rust and corrosion and old varnish that's collected down inside of these bowls you're going to want to clean all that stuff out of there you know luckily this stuff is real powdery and so it, it'll come out actually look at look at that most of it's magnetic so those are iron filings strength rust basically but uh, anyway that's another indicator that the rest of the fuel system may need to be cleaned out if we're seeing this much rust see that magnetic screwdriver there the rust 
Maybe you can see it better against this background. Look at all that rust. Yeah, that's an indicator that there's a lot of rust in that fuel system. So good thing we're cleaning it out. So here's the ultrasonic cleaner at work. Um, this guy here, it does a wonderful job of uh, buzzing off all of the stuff out of the nooks and crannies. Uh, I just have it soaking here in some uh, degreaser and water. So you don't have to use any kind of real strong solvents. It'll get the job done with some good degreaser, some of that purple stuff or that green stuff. Just something simple. Okay, so the first place to start with the fuel system is one end of the car or the other. In this case, we're going to start at the back where the fuel tank is located. And so on these old C3 Corvettes, the fuel tank is tucked up underneath the back of the car above the spare tire. So, of course, you're going to have to lower the spare tire and remove the cover above the spare tire in order to see the fuel tank. Now, once you do that, you'll also notice that the fuel tank is wider than the space between those two mufflers. And so you may find that you need to remove the fuel, or I'm sorry, the uh, exhaust system in order to get the fuel tank down. I did not have to do that. All I had to do was loosen up the hangers and I was able to bend the uh, exhaust out of the way and able to undo the straps of the fuel tank and lower the fuel tank down. On the top side of the fuel tank, you'll find the filler, so you can remove the, uh, the, the, the flap where you open to put gas in the car. And there's just four screws that hold that in. Once you remove that, there's a black plastic thing around this filler neck. You can just pull that out of the way. And what that will do is expose this area here where you can see where the uh, fuel sender plugs in and also the fuel lines go into the fuel tank. So this is a, a great place to access those lines. Um, as you can see here, these lines are very brittle and dry from over the years. And so you can try to remove them um, just by taking the clamps off of them and pushing them off of the metal lines that come here out, uh, out of the tank. Or uh, you can if you uh, find it easier, you can just cut this stuff off and you're going to want to replace these rubber lines anyway. And I'll show that here in a second, but uh, that may make it easier if you just cut them and move them out of the way. Um, obviously, uh, this is the opening where you would put the fuel into the tank and you can see here around the opening that it's very rusty. And as we saw inside that carburetor, there was a lot of rust in the system. Uh, this is one of the places that it came from. If you do decide that you want to remove the fuel lines off of the metal lines, the rubber part, you can take the little clamps off of them and then use some of these special um, hose removal sort of needle nose pliers. Um, I found that really interesting or, or very helpful to grab hold of the rubber line and twist it side to side so it would break its uh, sort of seal that it had against that metal line. And then you're able to push it off of the metal line a lot easier. And there's also... Um, see here on the lower right, this, uh, this bracket, this metal bracket that's got sort of a, a rusty shape or rusty uh, color and a C shape that goes around these fuel lines. And it's just uh, something that you can push to the side and out of the way um, so that, uh, that that comes off pretty easy. Around the uh, top of the tank here where this uh, fuel sender bolts up. I've removed one of those bolts. It made it a little bit easier here and just here to the lower right of these two lines. Uh, you'll see that, that that space there where the bolt was, that made it a little bit easier to push that clip out of the way. Now here's the tank dropped down from the back side of the car. Uh, obviously the spare tire and its carrier have been removed. The uh, exhaust hangers uh, above the Mufflers, I was able to just undo those and then was able to move the mufflers to the side. There are two straps that go around the tank and hold it up in place, and they are bolted up in the very back of the car. And uh, as you undo those tank straps, uh, it gives the, uh, the, the tank enough room to, to slide down. So not a hard job at all. Just make sure that uh, 
you lower it a little bit, make sure that you take the lines off of the top there where they go into the top of the tank, and then uh, there's nothing else that holds it in. Once a tank is dropped down, it makes it very easy to unbolt and remove the sending unit. Uh, as shown here, as you can tell, this one is very rusty, and especially the, uh, the little rheostat there in the middle with the float that goes to it. Man, that thing is just rusted into pieces. Uh, the sock down at the bottom is one of the filters in the system, and this one is just crusty and, and rusty. So uh, as the next slide will show also, this thing definitely needs to be replaced or you'll never get your uh, fuel gauge to work and uh, it may not pick up uh, fuel very well. Once the fuel sending unit is out of the way, you can look down inside of the fuel tank and that's what this view shows and so we're looking down in through where the fuel sender was and looking to the side and what you'll see is this black coating this is a like a liner a plastic liner of some kind that they put inside of the the tanks at this time and uh, those white lines that i'm circling there those are cracks in this liner that are allowing fuel to get in between that plastic liner and the uh, steel outer tank um, so this uh, will of course allow fuel and any moisture to get in there and help it to rust and and it further lends to uh, leaking I thought it was interesting that this thing was so creased on the inside and cracked like this and there are no obvious dents or anything on the outside of the tank so just an interesting way that these things fail. I thought this would be an interesting view this is laying underneath the back of the car looking up once the fuel tank has been removed you can see all of the fiberglass of the rear end of the car you're looking up through where you would fill the gas tank. Um, the hoses that I have uh, circled here this just shows the uh, rubber lines that you'll want to replace. It transitions from those steel lines to the rubber there, and those things are just cracked and dried out. So definitely want to replace those anytime that you get a chance to drop the tank down. You'll see the galvanized straps that run front to back. That holds the tank in place, and uh, those are in good shape. And like I said, uh, once you loosen those, you'll be able to drop that tank down. You just got to get things out of the way so that the tank can move freely. Okay, so moving from the tank in the back, just follow those steel lines from the tank along the frame rails all the way to the front of the vehicle and look for any rust spots or in this case, I found a kink in the supply line uh, coming up towards the uh, front of the engine. This kink is actually right where there was a, uh, a clip that was holding it to the frame, as you can see, and it pinched it. And so that would uh, severely restrict any kind of flow. And also, uh, as this one shows, there's a crack in it. You would have a leak there. So uh, definitely watch for those sort of things and, uh, and repair where necessary. So these cars have a mechanical fuel pump. And so the next part of the fuel system we want to check is transitioning from those steel lines that run around the frame. They turn into rubber lines which come over here to our fuel pump which is on the front passenger side of the engine. Uh, then the fuel pump which runs off the cam will move fuel from those lines and pump it up to the carburetor through this uh, steel line which has this sort of yellowish brass fitting right here. So uh, we'll make sure again that you replace all of these rubber lines. These were just really dried and just uh, very brittle. Uh, there will be a leak there if you if you don't uh, replace those. The other thing to do is to uh, test your fuel pump. There's a rubber diaphragm inside of there, and so if it's been sitting a while, like this one, uh, some people say if it's been using uh, ethanol gas, uh, it'll ruin that, that rubber diaphragm inside of it, and it won't pump effectively. That was the problem with this one, so it needed a new fuel pump. Um, very easy to replace. There's just two bolts that hold it on to the side of the engine. Uh, on the C3 here, it's a little bit of a tight fit, uh, so you'll have to use a, a variety of different wrenches in order to get it off of there, but it is doable, and uh, it will slide out the bottom here. 
Um, so that's the, the last part of the fuel system uh, besides the carburetor, which we talked about. So uh, again, just go through the entire system, find any weak spots, any corroded or broken lines, replace all the rubbers, and uh, you'll have a, a good clean system. Oh, don't, don't forget to blow out the lines. Remember, we saw all that little bit of rust and, and dust and, and corrosion that was inside the, uh, the carburetor. That came through the lines, and so it's probably in there as well. So you can clean those lines out, blow some air through them, maybe blow some brake cleaner through there, and then blow some air through it a few times and just until they come out clean. Uh, that way you're sure not to, to bring any new trash through those lines into your freshly cleaned uh, filters and or uh, uh, carburetor. And here's what it looks like after it's all put back together, looking down at the uh, fuel sender and where you put the fuel in. You can see that the uh, new rubber hoses have uh, got a, uh, a screw clamp on the feed line, but the, uh, the return line and the uh, vapor line, they just need spring clamps, so I reuse those. But uh, much, much cleaner and hopefully will work good for another 20 to 50 years. Okay, so rebuilt the carburetor, put it back on the engine, got a new fuel pump down there, all the rubber lines. We blew out all the trash that was in the fuel lines. So now, don't forget, come see this. Now on these carburetors, here's where the fuel line comes in. So we remove that and take out this adapter. And right in here is a fuel filter. This is really key that you replace this thing. And note also that right here on the end, there's a little plastic doohickey. If we pull that out, you'll see that that is a... Uh, like a check valve and these things get stuck they get corroded or they'll get trash inside of them so make sure that when you replace this filter you also get a new check valve okay so we'll put this back together and then that will be fuel system ready to test